Bon après-midi tout le monde et bienvenue à cette mise à jour sur le COVID-19 au Nouveau-Brunswick. Good afternoon everyone and thank you for joining us this afternoon for today's update on COVID-19 in New Brunswick. Speaking on behalf of the province today are the province's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Jennifer Russell, and the Honorable Dominic Cardi, Minister of Education and Early Childhood Development. Les porte-parole aujourd'hui sont le médecin hygiéniste en chef, le Dr. Jennifer Russell, et le ministre de l'Éducation et du Développement de la Petite Enfance, l'Honorable Dominic Cardi. Dr. Russell. Thank you, Bruce. Merci, Bruce. Bonjour, everyone. Good afternoon. On est ici sur un samedi après-midi durant le, le long weekend. Um, this is not really the start of the holiday weekend that uh, any of us were hoping for. Ce n'est pas vraiment le début de la longue fin de semaine de l'Action de grâce que nous espérions. Mais, uh, Aujourd'hui, j'annonce qu'il y a 20 nouveaux cas de la COVID-19 dans la province. 12 de ces cas sont dans la zone 1, la région de Moncton, et 7 sont dans la zone 5, la région de Camelton, et il y a un cas dans la zone 3, la région de Fredericton. Le nouveau cas dans la zone 3 est une personne âgée de 50 à 59 ans et, et c'est lié à un voyage à l'extérieur de la bulle atlantique. Les nouveaux cas dans la zone 1 comprennent une personne âgée de 20 à 29 ans, deux personnes âgées de 60 à 69 ans, deux personnes âgées de 60 à 79 ans, et quatre personnes âgées de 80 à 99 ans, trois personnes âgées de 90 ans ou plus. Neuf de ces cas sont liés à l'éclosion au manoir de Notre-Dame et trois font l'objet d'une enquête. Toutes ces personnes sont en is auto-isolement. Can everybody please mute your microphones? OK. Alors, les nouveaux cas dans la zone 5 comprennent une personne âgée de moins de 19 ans, une personne âgée de 20 à 29 ans, une personne âgée de 30 à 39 ans, une personne âgée de 50 à 59 ans et deux personnes âgées de 60 à 69 ans et une personne âgée de 70 à 79 ans. Tous ces cas sont liés à une éclosion régionale et ces personnes sont en auto-isolement. À l'heure actuelle, les régions de Camelton et de Moncton demeurent dans la phase d'alerte orange du plan de rétablissement provincial à la suite de la COVID-19. Et quand je dis Camelton, je veux dire la, la zone uh, 5 de, de camelton restigouche dalhousie Today, we have 20 new cases of COVID-19 to announce. Twelve of the cases are in Zone 1, the Moncton region, seven are in Zone 5, the Camelton region, and one is in Zone 3, the Fredericton region. The new case in Zone 3 is an individual between 50 and 59 years of age and is related to travel outside the Atlantic bubble. There's a new case, uh, new cases in Zone 1, and they include an individual between 20 and 29, two people between 60 and 69, two people between 70 and 79, and four people between 80 and 89, and three people over 90. Nine of these cases are related to an outbreak at the Manoir Notre Dame, and three are under investigation. All of them are self-isolating. The new cases in Zone 5 include an individual under 19 years of age, an individual between 20 and 29, an individual between 30 and 39, an individual between 50 and 59, and two people between 60 and 69, and an individual between 70 and 79, and these are related to a regional outbreak and they are self-isolating. At this time, both the Camelton and Moncton regions remain in the orange level under the province's COVID-19 recovery plan. We ask that you do not travel into and out of these zones at this time unless for essential services, as we do need to do everything we can to stop the spread of this virus, and travel to get your hair done does not constitute essential service. So we know there are students at post-secondary institutions in those zones who want to go home for Thanksgiving dinner. 
Um, if you haven't already left, we're really asking you not to travel to those zones at this time as we really, really need to slow the spread. And all the other zones in New Brunswick remain at the yellow level. No matter what zone of the province you are in, you must follow public health measures and guidelines. All New Brunswickers must work together to keep our numbers low and masks are especially important. All New Brunswickers must wear masks indoors when in public spaces and residents in zone one and five must wear masks both indoors and outdoors. Le port du masque est très important. Toutes les personnes du Nouveau-Brunswick doivent porter un masque à l'intérieur des espaces publics et les résidents dans les zones 1 et 5 doivent porter des masques à l'intérieur et à l'extérieur. I also encourage everyone to be conscious of the vulnerable members in your family, especially this holiday weekend when there will be increased interaction. This is not a time to stigmatize our fellow New Brunswickers or get complacent because your zone is currently in the yellow level. It's also not a time to point fingers. It's not a time to put out misinformation on social media. The best place to get your information is the GNB website. This is a time to remember that we are truly in this together. Puis je voulais raconter une histoire aujourd'hui. Um, mon père uh, avait un bateau quand j'étais jeune. C'était un, un beau bateau, mais il fallait que chaque année, il fait des, des réparations pour faire sûr qu'il n'y avait pas de trous dans le bateau, so, parce que sinon, il y aurait de l'eau dans le bateau. Maintenant, on a des trous dans notre bateau ici, à New Brunswick. Uh, et ça prend tous les citoyens pour nous aider à réparer les trous. Ça veut dire les masques, ne pas voyager si ce n'est pas nécessaire. Restez à la maison si vous avez des symptômes. Uh, Faites-vous tester. Alors, c'est vraiment important à ce moment-ci qu'on travaille tous ensemble pour faire sûr que notre bateau ne soit pas rempli d'eau. On veut continuer à avoir des beaux voyages et des beaux, des, des belles uh, rassemblements uh, dans le futur. Uh, beaucoup de personnes dans, dans nous, les coins de la province, dans tous les coins de la province, travaillent fort pour prendre les bonnes mesures et limiter la propagation de ce virus. J'encourage chacun d'entre vous à, à être une de ces personnes et à prendre les mesures nécessaires pour vous protéger, vous et votre famille, ainsi que votre collectivité. Maintain two meters of physical distance between yourself and others whenever you can. In public spaces, wear a mask or face covering. Always keep a couple of masks with you when you are out and make sure to wash them regularly. Wash your hands regularly and thoroughly. Cough and sneeze into your sleeve. Regularly clean high contact surfaces like kitchen countertops and door handles. La prise de chacune de ces mesures nous aidera à limiter la propagation de la COVID-19 dans, dans notre province. Chacun d'entre vous a la capacité de changer les choses. When we're doing the contact tracing, again, we are seeing that the close contacts are people who have been with other people for 15 minutes or longer within six feet, not wearing a mask. So again, when you calculate how many people exist in your life who you are having these kinds of interactions in, that is how many people we have to contact trace. And if we're up to, you know, um, 57 active cases who all have six to 10 contacts to trace, that is a very large number of people. And that is very, very hard to stay ahead of. So we really need your help to keep that number low. Toutes les personnes de la province doivent être sur un pied d'alerte et surveiller l'apparition des symptômes de la COVID-19. Si vous vous sentez mal ou vous avez des symptômes de la COVID-19, Isolez-vous immédiatement et prenez les mesures nécessaires pour passer un test. You can do this by filling out the online form available at the coronavirus webpage at gnb.ca. The online form is quick and easy to fill out, and I encourage anyone who can use this option to do so. And I want to take a moment about testing and self-isolation. As I know there are people who are confused about this and when you should do uh, either. So both are key to containing the virus spread. What's most important is that we test the right people, which today means those people who have symptoms who have recently returned from traveling outside the province and people who have been notified that they have come into close contact with known cases. And I do know that people get confused about exposure and who's at risk. If you have been notified by public health that you are a close contact, you are at risk of developing COVID-19 and therefore you should self-isolate and if, and if you have symptoms, get tested right away. 
Uh, in addition, we are also making available at this time the option for individuals who travel across the Quebec border daily for work to be voluntarily tested, even if you do not have symptoms, and you can arrange for your tests through the online form. And again, as we've seen the numbers increase uh, outside of our border with Quebec, we know that it's critical for, for people to take as much care and caution as possible. I would like to take this opportunity to share a bit more information about testing, uh, why we test and who we test and when we test. It's important for New Brunswickers to understand the amount of testing we conduct has no impact on flattening the curve or slowing down the spread of the virus. We need people, again, to follow the public health directions at all times. That's what keeps the numbers low. That's what keeps the virus from spreading. But if you do have symptoms, it's important for you to get tested so that we can isolate you immediately and we can isolate your close contacts immediately. That is what slows the spread of this virus. As a result, you will be contacted, if, if you are uh, positive, you'll be contacted to by public health and told to self-isolate for 14 days. And uh, we want these measures in place to protect you and your family and friends from further spread. So the general rules of self-isolation are to stay home, monitor yourself for symptoms such as fever, cough, difficulty breathing, Avoid contact with others, and if there are people living in your home, you should really stay in a separate room, use separate bathrooms if possible, and maintain a distance of at least two meters or six feet apart from others, and keep your interactions brief. Avoid sharing personal items. Nous avons tous la capacité et la responsabilité de nous protéger les uns les autres. C'est en nous soutenant les uns les autres que nous pourrons traverser cette épreuve qui nous touche non seulement sur le plan physique, mais aussi sur le plan Emotional. So I, I had a conversation with the Chief Medical Officers of Health from Nova Scotia, Newfoundland and PEI this morning and they are all concerned about what's happening here in New Brunswick and they offer their, their uh, support um, and I did agree to make sure that they, they were kept in uh, touch with us with respect to how things are progressing and uh, they are aware that there are probably many people from their provinces who have come here for Thanksgiving and I assured them that I would let them know that uh, I would be letting people know that if they've come to Zone 5 or Zone 1 for Thanksgiving that when they return to their home provinces or anywhere else in New Brunswick that they're uh, going back to, they really have to be diligent about wearing your masks, hand washing, social distancing, physical distancing, and really avoid vulnerable populations in congregate settings. And if you have symptoms, please get tested. So we really weren't wanting people to go to zone one and five this weekend, but if you have already gone to that area, again, when you go back to your respective areas, please be very, very vigilant. But if you've already gone to zone one and zone five, again, you really want to make sure that everybody you were traveling with is, is doing as much as they can in the next 14 days to watch for symptoms. We want people in the orange phase in zone one and zone two to limit their contacts to just two household bubbles and continue to follow physical distancing measures, wash your hands, etc. So even during these challenging times, like we are facing right now, there is much to be grateful for. I am grateful for all of the staff who are working this weekend. Um, I know some of them sounded quite um, concerned and very anxious for the well-being of all New Brunswickers right now because we have two zones that are affected right now but we don't want that to increase to any more zones at this time so we need to help them do their work by doing our work uh, as citizens. This long weekend might not be what we planned but I encourage you to take a moment and be thankful for all that we have and if you know people who are working in, in essential services or healthcare settings or public health or any of the areas that are dealing with outbreaks please offer them your support we live in a beautiful province where people look after one another and where we can truly keep one another healthy and safe. Ici, vous avez des membres de la famille ou des amis dans la région de Moncton ou de Camelton communiquez avec eux pour leur dire que vous en pensez de eux. Ils ont besoin de votre soutien en ce moment. Soyez honnêtes, nous avons tous besoin de votre soutien en ce moment. Et avant tout, soyez bienveillants et soutenez-vous les uns les autres. We are all doing the best we can in a difficult situation. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Bon après-midi. Bienvenue. I'll see Dr. Russell. Bruce, thanks for the introductions today. 
this is a, a time which I think we all hoped would uh, not reach us here in New Brunswick after a long summer where we had a respite from a disease that's ravaging the world. And we're able to, to look on from the security of our privileged corner of Canada. Now COVID-19 is back within our borders and we need to show the same resilience, the same strength that we have in recent months that led us to that privileged place as we try and push back against this disease. Because as Dr. Russell said, our boat is taking on water and it's up to all of us now to figure out the ways that we can plug those holes. On a besoin maintenant une approche collective pour repousser ce virus hors de nos frontières encore. On s'est chanceux les derniers mois de, de, de vivre en Nouveau-Brunswick, de vivre dans l'Atlantique au Canada, d'être assez protégé par notre propre action collective contre le COVID-19. Mais maintenant, le virus est retourné et on a besoin d'agir dans la même manière qu'on agit en mars, en avril, en mai de cette année, que les gens de Campbellton ont déjà agi pour repousser le virus la première fois, maintenant on va le faire encore. I can, as education minister, only imagine the stress that parents and families and teachers are feeling across the province right now. And this is a day I hoped I would not come, that I would have to stand and announce a first case linked to a public school in New Brunswick. So on Thursday, letters were sent out to families and the school community to inform them of a positive case of COVID-19 that had been confirmed at Sugarloaf Senior High School. So students at the school will be engaged on online learning, fully online learning, on Tuesday, October 13th, and Wednesday, October 14th. So this decision was made earlier last week to help students from Pointe-à-la-Croix and Lustigouche communities who attend the high school to transition to full-time online learning and that was necessitated by the actions of the government of Quebec. And we're doing our very best to accommodate those sm the small number of students who attend school in New Brunswick. But today we have a second case in a school. The case has been confirmed at the Académie Notre Dame in Dalhousie. Alors, en addition à le cas à l'école secondaire de Sugarloaf, on a maintenant aussi aujourd'hui un nouvel cas à l'Académie Notre Dame à Dalhousie. Je sais que tous les euh, l'équipe professionnelle, les élèves, les parents attendent tout euh, avec un niveau d'anxiété complètement compréhensible des nouvelles de santé publique. Tout le monde a les questions sur qu'est-ce que ça veut dire pour euh, l'éducation de leurs enfants. So I know that folks in public, uh, the parents and everyone involved in the school communities are waiting anxiously to hear directives from public health around how this is going to impact their child's education and of course the health and safety of their children. And at the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development, we've been working closely with Dr. Russell and her team over the last months on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure that we can have a school system that is as safe and protected as possible for the students and for the adults. Of course, in the last few days, that contact, that work together has only increased. But when it comes to you as parents watching today, no news is good news when it comes to hearing from public health. You will hear if you need to hear, but otherwise, please do, as the doctor said, refer to the GMB website and to formal news channels when it comes to finding out information about the safety and security of the school system, of the school that your child or children may attend, and about the health and safety of your particular children. We need your help. We need your help to make sure that contact tracing can be done quickly and effectively. The contact tracing process will determine the security measures, the safety measures that are put in place for each school. Alors, on demande aux familles liées à l'Académie de Notre-Dame pour être patient, d'attendre de, de, de communication de l'école, et je promis, le gouvernement promis, qu'on va continuer de travailler pendant cette fin de semaine pour assurer que toutes les familles qui ont besoin d'être contactées sont contactées. So again, if you need to hear from public health, if there's any risk of a, a case or a contact, you will hear from public health. And I'll take this moment to remind people, please download the Government of Canada app. Put it on the, any cell phone in your household. If your children have cell phones, here's a good use for them. Make sure that we get this app out there and shared as broadly as possible. S'il vous plaît, une mesure qu'on peut tout prendre, c'est d'utiliser l'application 
du gouvernement du Canada. C'est facile de, de mettre sur tous les télé téléphones, et ceci est un des bénéfices que tous les jeunes ont les, les, les cellulaires aujourd'hui. Alors, s'il vous plaît, utilisez l'app qui a été développée par le gouvernement du Canada. So this situation is rapidly evolving. We now have two zones that are in orange, and we now have lots of parents have questions on what that's going to mean for their schools, as well as parents across the province who have concerns about what this means for them. On sait que maintenant, avec deux zones qui sont dans l'orange, il y a beaucoup de questions des parents et aussi les questions, les inquiétudes des parents partout dans la province. On connaît que les masques sont une manière effective, sécuritaire, simple de combattre contre le COVID-19. Et ça, c'est pourquoi on va changer les protocoles, protocoles pour l'utilisation des masques dans les écoles publiques, dans les écoles, dans les zones qui sont maintenant dans la zone orange. Ces mesures vont appliquer à tous les élèves, tous les, les adultes, tous les enseignants, tous les membres de l'équipe scolaire, avec l'exception de celles qui ont, le qui ont les excuses médicales pour ne pas porter les masques. Et ça, c'est une, une raison assez minime. Ces mesures vont être en place pendant le temps que les zones 1 et 5 sont dans la zone orange. So, with two zones that are now in the orange phase, I know that parents are going to have lots of questions about what that means. In concrete terms, the main change for schools is that mask use policy will change because we know that masks are an effective and simple way of preventing the spread of COVID-19. So throughout the orange phase, so from now through till the time when those, those zones leave the orange phase, there's going to be a change in mask policy for everyone in the public school system. They're going to be required to wear masks whenever possible unless they have medical exemptions for doing so. And the reasons for getting a medical exemption from mask use are very hard to find. There is no reason for most people under all circumstances not to be able to wear a mask. All students in grades K to 12, K to 12 are required to wear a mask whenever they're on a school bus, even when they're sitting with a sibling or alone. For students and staff in grade 9 to 12 schools, masks are required at all times when in school. And the only exceptions will be when they're eating or engaged in physical activities such as gym class. And this includes when the students are outside for learning or during breaks. Now, for les élèves, for tous les élèves, en maternelle et douze, le nouveau politique veut dire que tu as besoin de porter un masque dans tous les instances quand tu es sur un autobus scolaire, même si tu assois seul sur un banc ou avec un frère ou une sœur. Pour les élèves euh, entre le neuvième et douzième année, les élèves au secondaire, tu as besoin de porter les masques tout le temps quand tu es à l'école. La seule exception est quand tu es en train de manger ou que tu es dans une salle de, de gym pour faire l'activité physique. Quand tu es en dehors, pendant les pauses, tu as besoin de porter un masque. Pour les élèves entre maternelle et huitième année, tu as besoin aussi de porter les masques tout le temps quand tu es dans, dans l'école. L'exception pour ces, cet âge est quand tu es en train de, de manger, quand tu assois seul, est en train de travailler euh, euh, sil, dans une manière silencieuse ou encore pendant les classes d'éducation physique. So, for students in grade, grade, grades 8 uh, down to kindergarten, masks are going to be required at all times when the students are in school, except when the kids are working by themselves and quietly, emphasis on quietly, when they're eating or again engaged in gym class. So for grade 9 to 12, uh, the only exemptions again are gym class and eating. Every kid on a school bus has to sit with a mask, whether they're sitting alone with a sibling, doesn't matter, masks are required at all times. While a region is in the orange phase, all intramural sports, interscholastic, and extracurricular activities are suspended. This includes Sistema. It includes school sports, drama, music, and any other after-school activities. Students who are immunocompromised, school personnel who are immunocompromised, should contact their healthcare provider for direction. Distance learning plans will be put in place until they are able to safely return to school. Pendant qu'une zone est dans, les, euh, dans une zone orange, tous les sports extramurales, intramurales, interscolastiques et les activités extracurriculaires comme le système, les sports, les drames, etc. sont tous sur pause pour les raisons de santé publique.
Et j'élève les membres d'équipe euh, scolaire qui euh, ont les, les problèmes avec leur système d'immunisation, de, euh, de, de peuvent contacter leur, euh, leur docteur, leur médecin, pour prendre la direction. On va mettre les plans d'éducation, de formation à la distance ou de travail à la distance en place jusqu'à le temps qu'ils sont capables de retourner dans une manière sécuritaire à l'école. Et pour plus d'informations sur le plan pour le retour de l'école, s'il vous plaît, tu peux consulter le site web du département de l'éducation et de la développement de la petite enfance. So anyone who's got any questions about uh, the return to school plans can consult the government's website at the EECD page, Early Education and Early Childhood Development. For early learning and childcare facilities, children are going to be actively screened before entering the center or home, and children will not be able to change groupings throughout the orange phase, and all field trips will be canceled or postponed. For children aged two and up, masks are required when they're in common areas. And for after-school programming, masks are required at all times, including within the classroom, in common spaces, and outdoors. Exemptions will be when they are sitting at a desk, working silently, or eating, or in play during sports activities. Children being provided transportation through their early learning and childcare facility are required to wear a mask at all times while in the vehicle. And more information on those guidelines for early learning and childcare facilities are available on the parent portal, again, on the EECD website. Pour les centres d'éducation de la petite enfance, encore les changements que tu peux voir sur le, le, le portal, sur le site web du, du ministère. Je veux cibler encore que ces mesures sont seulement en place pendant que ces zones sont dans la zone orange. Et c'est les mesures nécessaires pour faire tout qu'on peut pour combattre la pandémie. Et quand les régions retournent encore à la zone euh, jaune, toutes les écoles peuvent retourner juste comme il était pour le dernier mois. So I'm going to emphasize again that these changes are only in place while zones one and five are in the orange zone. When we return back to yellow zone, and to hopefully that'll be as yellow phase rather, hopefully that'll be as quickly as possible, schools can go back to their previous operational plans. And it's an important point to emphasize that a lot of the concerns that we hear about use of masks and these protocols, people get scared, they get spooked, and they ask, is this going to last forever? Is the world ever going to go back to normal? And it is, and it's going to go back to normal because we as people in this province decide that we're going to take the necessary public health measures to stamp out COVID-19. And we're doing this so that we can return to normal as quickly as possible. We're doing this so that we can hug people again. We're doing this so that we can see people smile without a mask in the way. But the only way we can get there is if we act decisively and with confidence in following the measures that Dr. Russell and her team are encouraging us all to use. This is our choice, and we all have a role to play. I know that uh, you're going to have many more questions and certainly uh, have more questions in the months and weeks to come. I'm committed to keeping you as informed as possible as we go through this school year. I do also have to emphasize that we will be doing everything we can to protect the privacy of everyone involved in the school system. Malgré le fait qu'on va essayer de communiquer tout qu'on peut Sur les, avec tous les détails qu'on peut sur les cas, sur les éclosions. On a besoin aussi de protéger la confidentialité des élèves, des membres d'équipe scolaire pendant cette pandémie. Alors, on va partager toute l'information qu'on peut, mais pas les détails personnels de, de chaque cas. Ça n'aide pas de tout la tâche de santé publique et ça contribue à une atmosphère de suspicion dans la province qui n'aide personne. On a besoin de nous tous renforcer nos, euh, dans cette province à ce temps. On a besoin de rallier ensemble, d'agir en solidarité. On ne peut pas faire ça si nous sommes en train de dire que cet individu a fait quelque chose, cet autre individu a fait quelque chose d'autre. Alors, on a besoin de suivre les, les avis de santé publique et on va absolument partager toute l'information qu'on peut. Et de mon ministère, je donne mon, 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 mon voix que... Euh, qu'on va absolument faire ça dans tous les sens que c'est légal de le faire. So regular updates to families and school staff are going to be communicated through the schools and the districts, and we'll continue to provide all the inf information we can while again protecting the privacy of students and staff. So please be kind and be patient. Encourage your children to be kind and patient in person and on social media. And that same goes to adults. 
So this week, you know, Premier Higgs announced a mandatory mask policy. And I reiterate again how for all of us across the province, those outside of zones one and five, the way we can help the people in Moncton and the Campbellton regions get back to a normal life or as close to it in the context of this pandemic, the way we can help them is by all of us wearing a mask, all of us following the advice of Dr. Russell to avoid non-essential travel from this moment onwards. Yes, it's inconvenient. Yes, it's annoying. But do not contribute to the spread of this disease. The sacrifices we're being made to ask in terms of irritations and interruptions to our daily routine are nothing compared to the stories that all of us see in our TVs and computers as we look from around the world and see the evidence of what happens in places who do not take this disease seriously. We've led the world to now in our fight against COVID-19. Let's not lose that position. Let's continue to act together. And on this Thanksgiving, be thankful, as the doctor said, for all that we have, but use that as well as a reminder for all that we could lose if we do not act together at this difficult time. If we head into Thanksgiving, I know I've canceled my trips. I say to my mom and dad right now, I'm sorry I won't see you this weekend. They live in St. Andrews, outside of any infection zone. But there's no reason for me to travel right now that would risk endangering their health or the health of the other people I might come across. Alors, quand prépare pour l'action de grâce, on a encore beaucoup de raisons pour être heureux d'être ici en Nouveau-Brunswick. Mais les actions qu'on prend cette semaine, la semaine après, va décider la direction de notre province pendant le reste de 2020 et qu'on entre en 2021. Alors, s'il vous plaît, prends les décisions basées sur les directives de santé publique. Écoute et agis basé sur les recommandations de Dr. Russell et son équipe. On a encore, encore beaucoup de raisons pour être euh, dire que nous sommes chanceux ici, mais on peut gaspiller tout ça si on lâche euh, à nos, nos, euh, notre attention envers le virus dans les semaines qui arrivent. Mais merci encore, j'ai hâte de prendre les questions et euh, on continue. Merci bien. Merci. Merci, M. le ministre Cartier et Dr. Russell. Thank you, Dr. Russell and Mr. Cardi. Nous allons maintenant procéder aux questions des journalistes. Vous avez toujours le droit de poser vos questions dans la langue de votre choix. Chaque journaliste aura une question et un suivi. We will now proceed with questions from the members of the media. You have the right to pose the, your question in the language of your choice. Each reporter will have one question and one quick follow-up. Alexander, CBC. A question for Minister Cardi. Uh, how many students at each school have been asked to stay home and isolate? Hey, thanks for the question. Again, I can't give information around uh, individual numbers like that. We will be providing under direction from public health, confirmed cases as those are identified. And the best way to make sure that we get those cases confirmed whenever they are is to engage in the contact tracing system as quickly as possible. And so that's what's going on now. Alors, dans ce cas, c'est impossible de, de donner tout, uh, on peut pas donner toute l'information personnelle sur uh, toutes les, les investigations. C'est seulement les cas confirmés qu'on peut partager en public pour les raisons de protéger la confidentialité de, des individus, mais aussi parce que uh, on veut pas ajouter aux informations qui n'ajoutent rien aux tâches de Dr. Russell et son équipe pour uh, combattre le virus. Follow-up? Yes, I have a follow-up for Dr. Russell. Uh, do we know anything more about the source of the Campbellton outbreak? At this time, the, the contact tracing is still ongoing. Uh, it can take several days for that kind of information to uh, surface, so we're still actively investigating any and all cases at this time, and uh, we will continue to investigate any new cases as a result of the close contacts that may become symptomatic that, we're, uh, that will then be tested as well. Travis Fortnum, Global TV. Hi there. Uh, my question is for Dr. Russell as well. Uh, pretty similar to that. I understand that this contact tracing is still on going, uh, ongoing. I'm just wondering if it's at all likely that any of these cases are the result of community transmission. It can be likely, actually, until we actually find the, the source of an outbreak. We, we have to um, be prepared for that uh, outcome. 
Uh, so again, we're working diligently and the best way for us to do that work is for everybody in the public to help us by answering your phone when public health calls you and providing as much information as you can. Sometimes it takes a few discussions and a few conversations. Uh, download your, that app. We really, again, we, we need to throw everything in the kitchen sink at this and that's what we did the last time when Zone 5 was in an outbreak situation. And at that time we didn't have a concurrent outbreak in the Moncton area, so we have two outbreaks ongoing concurrently so the more help we can get the better and the fewer contacts people have uh, the easier it is for us to do that contact tracing so again to echo what Minister Cardi said about staying put this weekend the fewer people moving around and the fewer people uh, accumulating more close contacts the better that is how we are going to get through this thank you Dr. Travis do you have a quick follow-up I do, and uh, for Dr. Russell as well. And on that note of the application use, I'm just wondering if you have any information on how many cases uh, confirmed positives have been because someone got a notification on that app, potential exposure. I haven't received any information on that. Uh, if I do, I can pass that along to you. Thank you, Mr. Fortman. Thank you, Dr. Vicki Hogarth, CHCO TV. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, my question is for Dr. Russell. Dr. Russell, just for clarity's sake, uh, many people have already traveled for the Thanksgiving holiday before Zone 1 and 5 returned to Orange. Are you advising people from Zone 1 and 5 to return home at this time if they've already traveled outside their zone? No, we're not telling them to go home immediately. They're already where they are. Um, but certainly uh, while they're outside of the zone, they should be extremely vigilant about staying six feet away from everyone that they are with, wearing a mask at all times, washing their hands, and if they are visiting vulnerable people to be extra careful. And if anybody from those zones uh, has symptoms, they need to get tested immediately by using the online, um, the online uh, referral form or they can call 811, but the referral form has been working very, very well. So have a very low threshold for getting tested and have a high level of vigilance in terms of protecting your loved ones this weekend. Thank you, Dr. Do you have a follow-up? It's just a quick follow-up. I'm wondering as far as schools go, is there any weekly surveillance testing for staff? Is that something you'd consider implementing if not? Well, at the beginning of the school year, again, we, we knew that there would be a heightened level of anxiety until uh, things became a bit more routine. So we did offer uh, asymptomatic testing to teachers in the first uh, couple of weeks of school, and then that has changed. But certainly, if people are anxious, in if certainly in Zone 5 at the moment, uh, you know, the, the best approach at this point in time is really to listen to public health advice. If public health contacts you directly, that means you, you either are a close contact or if you've had a test and they're contacting you because you're positive, then that's information that you personally can um, uh, oper uh, operationalize, act upon uh, in terms of self-isolation and, 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 and really being helpful with contact tracing. So, and, and, and what we're saying right now is if you have symptoms and you're concerned, uh, you can get tested uh, through the online referral form or from 811. Thank you. Thank you both. Andrew Watt, Telegraph Journal. Yeah, um, I'd like to, it doesn't matter to me who answers this question, um, but I'd like to understand how the Atlantic bubble works. And, you know, like if the other three provinces decide to say, yeah, okay, this is too bad, you guys have got to get out. Like, how does that work? Does New Brunswick have any say in that? Or can the other three provinces just kind of shut us out of the bubble? My understanding, Andrew, when the Atlantic bubble was established, it was done uh, at the same time and very cooperatively with the understanding that if one of the provinces out of the four started to experience a high number of cases and uh, it looked like the other provinces needed to tighten up their borders uh, as a protective measure, that th that would happen. So I have been in constant discussion with uh, the Chief Medical Officers of Health from Newfoundland, uh, PEI and Nova Scotia to keep them informed of, of things as they um, as they evolve, so they're very, very aware of the situation and, uh, and will continue to make their decisions ar around the risk uh, at this time and moving forward. And, and as things change, they'll have more conversations with their premiers. What is the tone of those discussions? Because I know Dr. Her Heather Morrison in PEI has already publicly expressed skepticism about New Brunswick's continued uh, position in the bubble. 
Well, all the chiefs, uh, chief medical officers of health, again, because I'm in ongoing conversations with them on a regular basis and uh, through text and email and also phone calls, we were on the phone earlier today uh, and I spoke to Dr. Strang yesterday, that uh, again, we will con they will continue to collectively evaluate their, uh, their comfort level with respect to the risk as it evolves here in New Brunswick. And, um, you know, the status quo is in place for the moment, but again, if they deem the risk to be too high for their province, to want to continue to be in the bubble, then that's within their prerogative and completely expected uh, with respect to how the bubble was set up in the first place. Thank you. Did you get a follow up? Yes. Will be at all, Radio Canada. Alors, j'aimerais savoir, euh, en ce qui concerne la fermeture des écoles, vous avez parlé de Sugar Wolf, mais quelle est la situation pour euh, l'académie? Est-ce que cette école demeure ouverte ou fermée? Et si vous pouvez nous dire combien de temps va durer la fermeture euh, dans le cas de Sugar Wolf et si c'est le cas pour euh, l'académie? Merci pour la question. Uh, Sugarloaf s'est fermé pour deux jours à ce point, pour mardi et mercredi, la semaine qui arrive. Et ça, c'était une, une fermeture qui était déjà planifiée la semaine passée à cause du changement dans les politiques en Québec, au Québec, uh, parce qu'on n'avait pas la coopération qu'on avait besoin pour uh, assez, uh, assurer la sécurité du, uh, de la communauté de l'Estigouche à une autre communauté sur l'autre côté de la frontière. Uh, et alors, on va passer à la, la formation à distance, à plein temps, pour les élèves qui habitent en liste de gauche euh, la, semaine, la semaine prochaine. Mais pour le reste des écoles, ça reste, ils restent ouverts avec les mesures euh, augmentées qu'on a discuté, quand j'ai discuté dans mon parallèle quelques minutes passées. Le, toutes les raisons pour, pourquoi on a passé les derniers six mois d'assurer qu'on avait un plan de retour à l'école sécuritaire était pour assurer qu'au maximum, les écoles peuvent rester ouvertes. Pour les raisons, pour, oui, l'académie aussi. Alors, on va prendre toujours l'avis de, de, de santé publique. S'il y a un problème qui nécessite la fermeture d'une école pour une période de temps, on va prendre l'avis de, de santé publique. Mais à ce point, en, en coopération avec santé publique, on a développé un plan qui assure que beaucoup de cas, on peut laisser les écoles rester ouvertes. C'est important pour les jeunes, leur santé mentale, pour leur éducation. La sécurité, la santé publique, c'est primordial, absolument. Mais on a besoin de toujours de balancer les besoins des enfants dans toutes les différentes circonstances de leur vie. Et on va continuer de le faire. So Sugarloaf School is closed for two days next week because of the pre-existing pre situation with Quebec, where the government of Quebec was unable to offer uh, sufficient security COVID protection controls uh, to the government of New Brunswick, which meant that a small number of students who study in New Brunswick, but who live in, in Listigouche, uh, they had been attending school without issue. Now we're having to move them to online learning at the high school level starting next week. And so we're taking the, those two days with that school being closed, and it's coincident that there happens to be a case. Now we're acting on that as well. With the other school and with any other schools in the orange zone, the goal is to keep schools open for all the reasons that schools need to be open, for the mental health of the students, for uh, making sure that their education continues, because this pandemic has been going on for the better part of a year and it's going to continue for some time. And the best way to get rid of it as quickly as possible is to have the best, most proactive measures in place. And so our effort is always to balance the education needs of each student with the safety of the staff and of the students. And so we're doing that. We've worked consistently with public safety to make sure our back to school plan meets public safety guidelines. And I'm hopeful that we'll be able to put an end to these two outbreaks and get back to the yellow phase, hopefully then the green, and in a few short months, months put this pandemic behind us. Merci. Oui, J'aimerais savoir, M. Cordier, dans les deux régions où on est en phase orange en ce moment, est-ce que les parents peuvent choisir de garder leurs enfants à la maison euh, et quelles sont les mesures supplémentaires que les parents doivent prendre? When schools, quand les écoles sont ouvertes, les écoles sont ouvertes. Et on va prendre les décisions de fermer pour un jour, une semaine, n'importe quelle période de temps, des écoles basées sur la vie de santé publique. Alors, ce temps, il n'y a pas d'indication qu'on a besoin de faire ça. 
at all. Schools are open right now, and we expect students to attend school when schools are open. And we'll work consistently with public health to make sure that we have the most up-to-date guidelines to protect the students and staff and the rest of the personnel at school. But as long as schools are open, schools are open, and we expect students to attend. Merci, Margot Castadet, Radio-Canada. La question s'adresse à la docteur Russell. Vous avez parlé à un moment des masques obligatoires à l'extérieur dans euh, les euh, zones euh, en phase orange. Est-ce bien le cas Et si oui, qu'est-ce que ça veut dire concrètement Euh, oui, c'est vrai. Euh, dans les deux zones euh, orange, alors zone 1 et zone 5, les masques sont obligatoires durant la phase orange, de en dehors, à l'intérieur et à l'extérieur dans des endroits publics. As-tu suivi, Mago? Donc ça, ça veut dire que dans la rue, on doit marcher avec notre masque et les élèves, même à l'extérieur, dans, euh, dans les cours de récréation, ils doivent le porter. Oui. C'est ça. OK. Erica Butler, CHMA, Sackville. Hi. Um, I guess I'm wondering how many cases of the total recent cases in Zone 1 have now been identified as travel-related, how many related to the manoir, and how many are still under investigation? So right now there are three currently under investigation and the rest can all be traced back to the manoir. In term no, we don't have any travel related cases out of zone one? There are travel related cases right now in zone three, but that's a separate uh, issue in terms of where they travel to and from. And they're, they're self-isolating and have been self-isolating since their diagnosis. And in zone five, uh, I know we have at least one travel related case, but the contact tracing is very extensive right now um, as there are many overlaps in terms of close contact. So we're still analyzing all that information. It'll be a while before we can piece it all together. No, we have we have traced what we think might be an index case to that outbreak, but again, we still have three cases under investigation, and we have to put all this information together. So we're still working on that. Ms. Butler, do you have a follow-up? Um, no, that's everything. Thanks. Voilà la fin de notre mise à jour pour ce samedi. Merci beaucoup. That concludes today's update for Saturday. Thank you very much.